asked to do a, a quick talk. Uh, I arrived in June, 10th of June, so I'm now just past my first 100 days, uh, and I can tell you it's been a, a fairly eye-opening 100 days, some of the stuff. We managed to, to, to change the organisational construct around the uh, Centre for Management and Organisational Development, which really didn't say what it did on the tin, to the Office of Government CIO, and I'm in the process of changing that around. But I thought we'd, we'd, we'd start with that, um, first of all, the slide which puts the Office of Government Chief Information Officer in place, and there is a certain nuance with the government buildings slide and the, and the, and the view of the centre there. Uh, I'm not necessarily at the moment, uh, and I'll say this uh, fairly uh, up front, I'm not that con concerned with driving a centralist policy. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in the agenda around digital and the three areas which you'll see later on, which is much more about sharing and co-creation of a new environment. And that's where digital, I think, starts and kicks off. So what is, what is digital? And you may have seen this slide before. Uh, it's a Gartner slide. And it's about a confluence, a confluence of four forces that are going on at this moment in time. Uh, the first one is social. Uh, I said uh, earlier today, I've said it in a couple of forums I've been in, when I arrived, I joined the state in June, and I had to get a PPS number. So I went onto DSP's website, good as it is, with plenty of content, but actually I learned uh, more from going out into the World Wide Web and the internet and doing a search on getting a PPS number and asking that question. I was informed by a very uh, a worthy individual, that the best thing to do was to go to the intro centre on Parnell, just off Parnell Street, early in the morning, uh, and that's the quickest and smoothest place to go and get a PPS number, and you fill out the form and it'll get processed. If you go later in the day, there'll be more people. And this was all in a chat room, so it was all social. It was all done around the fact that I interacted digitally with somebody I didn't know. Uh, there was a, a series of comments around that saying, yes, this was good, almost like TripAdvisor. Yeah, this was a good comment. I learned from this, and actually this was good. And I followed the same process. I must admit, mea culpa, uh, and to my chagrin, I have not gone in and left a tick in the box to turn around and say, yeah, this was a great comment. I must do that because I've used this uh, a couple of times. But actually, that was a social interaction that I did because of the, 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 the interaction around these sort of four fo forces. The mobile one... Uh, I, won't, um, I won't ask how many people here have smartphones, but the ubiquitous smartphone uh, is now our modus operandi. I got here this morning because I, I wasn't sure of the, the, the location here. I actually got here using an iPhone, and it was telling me and talking to me. It's quite weird, isn't it, whenever you're walking up the street and somebody talks out your pocket at you, and somebody walks past goes, what was that? But actually, you know, it turned left in 15 metres onto such. And it was, it was, a, mobile, it was a mobile journey, because I walked here from, uh, from South Block. And, and that just shows you the power that I personally experienced. Uh, but our, our society has now gone mobile. Uh, and, and even more so, not just our society, but globally, China, etc., some of the rest of the world, but concentrating on Ireland. Uh, cloud is this thing that sits in the, the background. It's an infrastructure thing, and I think we put a lot of effort into saying, well, we need to have cloud. We don't really know what it is, but it's more a case of a phenomenon that says we can deliver things in a shared sense, a scalable, agile way that costs us less, um, and actually is much more flexible in terms of how we consume resources from a technology perspective. And then information. I think information is the heart of the digital era. It powers everything we do in data. There was a data sharing bill uh, uh, memo that we're, we're now working on to get to a, a data sharing and governance bill, which will allow and underpin a lot of the, the new modern phenomenon around digital. So digital is being driven by four forces at the moment, I believe. It's also being driven by this force which is under the information banner, which is the growth of data. The growth of data in terms of the sheer scale that's going on. Many, much of that data is completely unused. I think whenever you look at the amount of data we would con actually usefully consume uh, and use to, to generate information, uh, is about 4%. So the, the amount that we're generating from videos, you just have to go onto YouTube, you just have to go onto Facebook, you just have to see the amount of emails you get on a day-to-day -day basis, and we're storing and then backing up and, and, and putting in different places. Don't worry about the numbers as etabytes. It's a technical term with a load of noughts at the end of it. But it, it, it just shows you that the, the, the business to be in at the moment is information, because the information growth curve for the planet uh, is going off the, off the chart. Um, and we will cope with it. No doubt we will cope with it. The question, though, is how much cost will that 
bring to us and how we can start to design now for the future in terms of building infrastructures and capability that will deal with the sorts of, uh, of on-demand video. I'll give you a fact. Most of you have, have uh, who, who, high-definition televisions. I have a high-definition television in the house. And actually, when you download high-definition versus ordinary video, it's six times the volume of data that is transferred across a high-definition television. So when you think about the high-definition activities, which you probably won't think about whenever you're commissioning a system that goes into an airport or goes into an office or goes into some form of delivery mechanism, and you want to go and put high-definition in there because you can, you can use it for guard as your corner or you can use it for defense or you can just use it uh, to, to, to show people uh, where you're going in terms of YouTube, just think around the, the, the what does high-definition mean. It's another route to escalating the size and, and shape of the data that we will have to store and manipulate. I suppose our horizon, uh, in terms of where we're going, if you thought, I, I, I'm a visiting professor at the Ulster University Business School in, in McGee in Derry, and I went up there five weeks ago, six weeks ago, to talk to a PhD student around uh, her uh, thesis that she was talking about, how did shared services arrive in Northern Ireland? And I was there, a CIO, Director of E-Government, in the early days, whenever we were formulating the plans around shared services. And she said, right, okay, what, what, what you were building... For, for, for sharing. Why didn't you build uh, for, for with the NI Direct environment, which was the contact centre part of the, the, the deal? Why did you not build for these sorts of devices here? And she put a mobile phone, a smartphone on the table. And I said they didn't exist in 2004, less than 10 years ago. In fact, most of your uh, tablets uh, that you'll find now, apart maybe from the iPad, which was a little bit, uh, a bit, a bit longer first on the market, but most of them have only been uh, in, in operation uh, for the last four or five years. And actually, they... they am and you'll see it later on, um, they'll, 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 they uh, are the, uh, the mechanism, tablets in the home are the mechanism by, whereby much of the online uh, purchases are done by the consumer, and yet they weren't around four years or five years ago in general use. So we are living in a highly multifaceted world. Primarily, our life is made more complex by digital. It is, uh, we interact at a far greater speed uh, my, I was walking here and my, my wife called me because she's, she, she runs a mother and toddlers group uh, or helps to run a mother and toddlers group in the north and she asked me uh, the, the, the gentleman who was there had fat fingers and he managed to put the screen on his laptop upside down how did, how did so, so you know the, there's, a, there's an immediacy in getting the answer in fact I said just reboot the thing and, and it will come back again and it did that's the first step, reboot. It's always an IT good, uh, good lesson. And uh, turn it off, turn it back on again. Yeah, it's, a dumb, it's a dumb machine. And, um, and actually fixed the problem. But it was done instantaneously as I was walking from the office to here. So the speed of, of transaction in this multifaceted world is being driven by digital. It, the systems are changing as well. Here's, a, here's a, uh, an, a thing about fixing education with big data. It's about how do you do uh, data and predictive analytics and education system. And it's from the US and Brookings um, uh, Institute uh, comment. I don't really mind about w w what, the, what the text, the context of the, the, uh, the actual article on fixing turning teachers into data scientists. Uh, you could say the same for Coda Dojo and turning teachers into coding uh, specialists. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to fixate on that. But I do, know, I do want to, to sort of focus around the fact that our changing environment is, is, is quite heavily focused around certain things that the public service needs to be really quite keen and interested in. And this is an education slide of saying education is changing. We had a conversation earlier on about how the interaction in the classroom where the teacher was the, uh, the, the, the Jedi Knight, I'd look at it like this, a Jedi warrior with, with, with 30 uh, people firing things and a lightsaber answering those questions backwards and forwards. Soon it's going to be on the other foot, that the, 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 the learner is going to have more information going into a classroom if they're focused on this and they're, they're committed and energised than maybe the teacher because the teacher can't span. It's like my, my current job, you know, trying to boil the ocean is not possible. So the, the indi 30 individuals out there are maybe going to have more information than the teacher has at the other side. So how do cultures change? How do we, how do we change the systems that support a digital environment? Also e-health. Uh, a, a clear direction of travel is into health. I was with um, um, Minister Howland yesterday. And we were talking about e-health, what it what it means, and, and it was about you know well you could put an iPhone on your on your uh, on your arm against a diabetes sensor or something like that, and it can start signalling backwards and forwards, so people can because mo most most diabetes patients are very very meticulous about keeping books about their 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 eating habits. They have to 
Uh, certainly, depending on the type of diabetes, you have to be very, very keen around managing all your intake. And technology and digital can help. Just look at the recent stuff where iPhones are being equipped for use with photography and the camera to do eye inspections in Africa, the sort of e-health direction of travel. So that is really quite a, a part of working towards digital from a government perspective. And standing still isn't an option. We, we, we're here to serve the public. So we're here to design things for the future to be able to, 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 to move that forward. So in this uh, multi-contextual environment, I've been working with DCENR, um, and you'll see in the uh, National Digital Strategy a fairly big section on e-government. And this was only a few weeks, if not months ago now, a few weeks ago that this was published. And it's, it's quite extant. Um, so moving from digital, the, 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 the average citizen in Ireland is spending 1,400 euros um, a year on uh, online spend. And it's interesting to note where that's coming from. And the majority uh, and the largest proportion is this bit up here on the age 55 plus. So don't let anybody tell you that this is a generational thing. Uh, actually, it spans the whole thing. Now, the fact that my son probably is using my top-end credit card here to do his online purchases maybe means that some of that 1400 is is actually incorrectly reported in my version rather than than the uh, the 18 year old who's sitting on the left hand side but still it shows you the sort of volume and the importance in terms of the economy uh, the economy and the economic value of going digital uh, is seen by DCNR to represent something like 7.1 billion in terms of the GDP and the businesses etc so government needs to get get on top of this and start planning for the future. Um, but we can't afford to spend any money on doing the wrong thing. Because everything we, we, we spend on capital now, we, we're, we're in, still in the process of, of trying to balance our books to, 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 uh, to get to a point where we've got that, that, that level, or the correct level in place. So we, we've got to, A, spend our money wisely and, and get a return on investment. So we can't, we can't spend money on the wrong things. So is digital the right thing? That was the question. So what's the difference and is digital the right thing? Do we need to shift the emphasis away from e-government to digital? Some people would say, well, what's wrong with just the terminology e-government? I'm not sure e-government answers the, 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 the overall question now in the 20... Oh, let me get that. Uh, it does take a while to, to get these moved forward. There you go. Let, let, me, let me talk about my role uh, as a government CIO. Uh, and why I think digital is important. Well, the five key principles, did that go forward too quickly? It did, didn't it? That's my, that's my um, you know, get down here. Give me a, this radio mics. There you go, that's back again. My, my overall role is to define and implement an enterprise-wide ICT strategy. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm here to do, and improve the overall performance of public service. That's what the ICT strategy is supposed to do. And I believe I can do that using three different steps here. A step change in citizen and business experience when they're dealing with government online, which I uh, am following in terms of the, the, the stuff that's been put in, uh, was in place in front of me, uh, digital first. Developing a government uh, ethos and mantra around building once and using many times. And then using the ICT strategy with metrics to drive forward a very, very uh, positive and metrics-driven approach to getting return on investment. The five key principles of e-government are still extant. They still work. Uh, however, focusing on two of them here, public services delivered through most appropriate channels and public bodies should work to ensure that the online channel is the most attractive option for customers, have a direct interrelationship, I believe, with digital because they're channel-specific. And digital is much more a mobile channel than it is a... Uh, a um, necessarily a fixed PC channel. The government strategy is a uh, jigsaw puzzle with 44 actions in it, but it doesn't really represent, I think, a modern view uh, of, of where digital is going. And I think it does need uh, a slight refresh in terms of just bringing those, picture, those bits of jigsaw puzzle uh, back into focus in terms of a picture. So moving from e-government to digital, we have to remember that actually e-government was, I think, written around the, the, the sort of 2000s, late 2000s, uh, um, and into 2010-ish, where people were still focusing on driving forward 
desktop RJ45 connections and a home base, getting people online and web and website view of life, rather than focusing on the new modern digital environment, which is about how do you raise that expectation, how do you deal with the, the speed of response that is needed in the new digital era. In fact, uh, there are four key factors, and excuse me if uh, a couple of people may have seen this before, last week I was using this, the same thing, but the four key factors, I think, the first one is the autonomous customer. And actually, the, the customer is becoming much more autonomous in, in, in what they do. And I'll give you an example. This is my son, who's 18 year, years old. And he lives in his bedroom uh, with his Xbox and his laptop and his technology. And he's not a, techno, he's not, not a technocrat. In fact, in fact, he's not an engineer. Uh, and it's dangerous to go into his bedroom without a tetanus injection. Um, but the, the, the key element was when I did go into his, in, his bedroom uh, a while back, he was able to pause his YouTube video playing on his TV via his Xbox with his mobile phone. And I said, how did you do that? How did you do I'm a technocrat. I, I couldn't do that. So how did you do that? He said, I just went onto YouTube. It showed me how to do it with my device, with my Xbox, and now he can slob it in bed even more without having to get out and do anything. Right? So, so he's, he's become an autonomous customer. He's consuming things via YouTube and doing things himself. He doesn't want, in many cases doesn't need, because we're in a, a business of satisfying need, um, he doesn't need our help to do these things. And yet, in many instances, we do do that, uh, and we spend money doing that. The second one is new media. And we've dwelt uh, uh, on uh, the types of new media uh, that, that are out there. But I think video is the upcoming uh, media of choice in many consumption models in terms of digital. Uh, YouTube, how to use YouTube to inform. And I, I was lucky enough to be at a, uh, a presentation last week where Vivian from uh, Revenue Commissioners was talking about putting YouTube up to do local property tax and how to get through that. And, and you know, I would encourage people to start thinking in those sorts of ways about how to use a free channel like YouTube to, 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 to inform this autonomous customer of how they can do uh, and get access to, to new services in a better way. And of course, mobile consumption uh, we've talked about, but actually this YouTube phenomenon, video uh, as, a, as a learning mechanism, I think is, is, is really uh, a key factor in moving us towards digital and how we could exploit it. And then there's the internet of things. The Internet of Things is a, about the devices that we carry around being able to help in terms of the, the, the route forward. If you go to the airport at the moment, queuing theories in place as people are, um, uh, mobile devices are being monitored backwards and forwards in many airports to show you where the herds of, and that's not insulting, but the herds of passengers are going because whenever you have more than a 30 minute queue in a security line, you end up Ha breaching international rules that say this is the security line number that actually is the, it's a cutoff of you becoming something that can be fined in terms of international air transport. So the internet of things is, is in, in, in our pockets, it's in my car as I go back through and up and down through the eFlow system. The, e the internet of things is an extremely powerful factor when we're moving to digital. Move forward. I've probably gone forward two clicks now. There you go. So, in developing this, uh, formulating the ICT strategy, you can see that my first focus is on delivering a step change through this digital first activity, trying to get an awareness in my early days that digital is important, that it's a new phenomenon. It's not just e government on steroids. And that we develop government platforms on a build once use many environment, and that we actually build it through metrics. And we manage things through numbers. But we do need to invest in the right things. And I do believe, as my, I, I would posit, that doing more with digital is the right thing. Uh, we should do it in a measured way. But we should certainly start investigating how we're going to respond to the drive towards digital that our customer base uh, uh, is consuming and how it can offer us really quite great value for money by stopping doing things that we don't need to do and helping this autonomous customer to start to, to, to gain traction in terms of, of, of moving forward the, the, the issues we have with, with spend. Uh, I am a, a digicrat. I have an email address. 
although interestingly enough, my son doesn't. He, when I walked into his room and said, can I have your e -dress, email address now? I'm moving down into Dublin and stuff like that. I'd like to communicate. And he said, Daddy, I don't have an email address. I'm on Facebook and I'm on iChat and, 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 and I'm on instant messaging. I don't have email, so don't bother talking to me on email. So actually now I Facebook him from my mobile phone on instant messaging, and so we're backwards and forwards. So, you know, th th those are the modern, uh, modern movements in terms of how we're dealing with the citizen on, on those sorts of mechanisms. I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn, and that's my mobile number because I'm seldom in the office. Uh, I'm out with people around the bazaars. So there you go, and thank you very much, and we can open it now into questions. Thank you.